Let's pray for our country right now, would you? Jesus, we're grateful for the men and women who have sacrificed so much. We're grateful for you who have sacrificed so much. And Lord, we ask you to help us in this country live honorably and for you. Would you help us? Your scripture says if we humble ourselves and pray, you'll heal our land. So we pray for healing today for this land. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I am messed up. I'm supposed to preach a sermon now. Oof. I don't know what this lighter's doing up here, but one, somebody's going to have a hard time in the parking lot. <laughs> oh, you're funny. Thank you, Bo, for that. Uh, important, uh, and thank you, Michael, for leading us in the song. I, I think this is just, uh, I was driving home last night after taking uh, the trash to the little garbage area, and I was driving by homes, and the windows were open. Sorry, I'm so messed up. I was great, cold-hearted and everything and, <laughs> until this happened. I was driving home last night, and I was just looking in the windows of people having dinner, and the families that were walking together, and the, the, um, the joy of living, the, the peace we're enjoying, the prosperity. Our poorest people are some of the wealthiest people in other lands. Uh, I, I'm just saying, we are... We are I think we're called to be grateful, and I think it's important to take this calling and uh, make the most of it. I loved what Bo said, go have fun, but remember why you get to. And we just, I just thank you for uh, everyone who's served. Every other person in this building seems to be a Marine or an Air Army guy. Somebody asked me, do you have a security plan for your church if somebody comes in and tries to cause problems? All I say is, good luck to that poor sucker. <laughs> uh, we've been on a series called Action Speak, and the, the point of this series is to take the actions of Jesus, and we're, we've done it since Easter, and now we're, we're coming back in full circle to the action of his willing submission to die on the cross for us, and Save us from our sins. This, this amazing event it was the greatest act of love ever. And I just want to just uh, let you know that this, the acts of Jesus, what he's done in your life, what he's done in my life, what he's doing in our, our world now, it's really important that we see what Jesus is doing and how he's drawing people and touching people. And, but it's not without great cost. Um, one of my most moving moments in my life, I was by myself. Uh, I was with a tour group that was going through the Smithsonian Institute uh, at a very snail-like pace. I don't travel well with people because I like to go my speed, which is usually fast. And they would look and read everything. And the Smithsonian Institute is not a small visit. And so I knew that this was not going to, I wanted to see other things. So I ditched them on the third floor <laughs> and snuck out the back and hopped a bus and landed in the middle of Arlington National Cemetery. And it was pouring rain. Ooh. I was sitting here by myself in the pouring rain and just stood there and absorbed 
the sacrifice, the great sacrifice. Some of them were more willing than others, but all of them paid that price. I, there was maybe a smattering of people here and there, but I didn't see anyone. And I was in the middle of that time, and I was just thinking, God, this is an amazing spot. Help me get this. Help me understand this. So here we are in this time where Jesus is getting prepared to give his life for the sins of the world. Do you know there's been some really bad sinners in this world? Just think of them for a minute. You're supposed to think of yourself somewhere along this line. Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of what God has called us to. But all those sins, the, the sins of evil that were uh, caused were coming down to the moment of truth where they were going to be laid on Jesus. The Trinity is such a mystery to me. I, I heard a clip uh, lately from uh, uh, it was a pastor it was Timothy Keller who had just passed away and they played a clip of him explaining. He said, somewhere in the center of the universe, the Trinity is in total unity and love. And when I pass from this world, if I know Jesus, I'm going to end up in the, mid in the middle of that amazing unity and love forever. If you're not sure that you know Jesus that should concern you to the point where you accept him as your Lord and Savior. And if you are crazy enough to reject him, that should really scare you. Because he has nothing but love and unity waiting for you. But if you reject him, eternal separation from God. I have no idea how it looks. The Bible's described it a couple different ways. But the unity that is in the Holy Trinity, the, the complete love and perfection of God, decided that they needed to redeem mankind and give us a choice to serve him or not. Because if, if we choose to, it's an awesome relationship. It's no more robotics. It's no more automatic things. It's like, choose me. And if you choose me, we're, our relationship then grows and develops and becomes amazing and eternal. Well, this unity of the Trinity decided to send Jesus to this earth to live here and to pay the price and the sacrifice of our iniquity and our sin. And that's not a small thing. It's the biggest act of love ever, ever recorded. And it wasn't done easy. Mark chapter 14, verse 32 through 36, we see Jesus in a struggle. He's in a struggle of the enormity of the task before him. But he's also in a struggle of unity with the Trinity. Mark 14, 32, they went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him and began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow at the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. 
our scriptures end with a period there, and we don't, don't know the time or the length or the enormity of the struggle, but the last line goes, yet not what I will, but what you will. The Trinity was even being tested on submission one to another. If you're taking notes, the first point is submission is an act of your will. You know, it's one of our guiding values to submit one to another out of reverence for Christ and who he is. If I submit to you and you submit to me, there's no problems we can't get through. Um, but it takes a submission of our heart to connect and to be a part uh, and to understand what that looks like. Lila and I planted our first church in 1988. It was interesting. As much We were the same age as Jordan and Lacey when they planted this one. We were 29. We planted the church, but we were in a very dysfunctional church before we planted this church. We had four different pastors in six years. They just couldn't take what a crazy bunch we were. But it was also a structure where membership was on a card. I explained that a little bit last week. <laughs> and we had card-carrying members that didn't have their hearts in the place. And so we had fights and division in the church. And unity was terrible. So Lila and I thought, when we plant a church, let's do this. Let's have a guiding value to submit one to another out of reverence for Christ. Let's just try that. I had no idea. I thought it was kind of a casual idea. But submission, one to another, is hard. And all the married folk say, Amen. <laughs> the scripture in Ephesians 5.20, in Ephesians 5, 4, no, 5, 21, says this, Submit yourselves one to another out of reverence for Christ. And then it goes on talking about husbands and wives submitting and loving. But it works for all of our relationships. <laughs> so planning a sermon on submission, I thought I should have a pretty easy week. But it's been the most testing week of submission for me. Sometimes I would love to hand the mic to somebody else and just say, preach to me. I have got a tough week going on. Here's my, here's my story. I know, it's therapy time for Joe. <laughs> We're constructing a facility in McMinnville at the church there for the Head Start. They're actually paying for it because we have such a good relationship with Head Start they want to use our facility, and we say, that would be awesome. And then they said, well, we can remodel it for you. And so they're remodeling it for us. It's wonderful. Everybody's been just a joy to work with. The, the contractors and the different people are just have been wonderful folks. Uh, and all the inspectors have been great and fun to work with until this week. <laughs> And there's been a little bit of a discrepancy on our, our understanding of the code. And it's been covered up by sheetrock. And the hard part is the general contractor person, the guy in charge, <coughs> Joe, says, it's, it's me. <laughs> Made the mistake of not double checking to see if we had passed. Because it's online and it's, you know, up in the cloud. <laughs> Did I sound like a geezer? Yeah. I found myself talking to a group of people that were questioning my honesty and integrity. That's not easy. Um... You know why it's not easy? Because, you know, in my life in the past, I've probably cut a corner here or there. 
I've probably passed somebody. One of, I have to be careful driving to church because I don't want to pass one of you because, like, you're going to say, what a crazy driver he is. So, you know, I get it. I'm not perfect. I'm not planning to be perfect. But one of the things that I'm struggling with was this week having to live out submission one to another because submitting is going to be tested. You are going to have to pass the test of submission to one another, but you have to pass the test to submission to God. This is a test that Jesus himself was in the midst. And it was like, Father, everything is possible. Can you take this cup from me? Could we find another way around this? Salvation of the world. I think he knew. In fact, he said, God, with all things, all, everything is possible for you. God, you could get me out of this jam. How many have said that to God? God, you can get me out of this situation. All things are possible here. God, you know you can relieve me of this stress and turmoil, this relationship of difficulty, this situation that is hard to get through. You can relieve me of from because God, all things are possible for you. When you pray that, you're not a terrible person. It's the same prayer that Jesus prayed to God. Hmm. And then take this cup for me, and then there's this next line, yet not what I will, but what you will. I think there's some time of wrestling there. I think there's some time of figuring this out. Submission is an act of our will, and we have to decide to do it or not. Submission is a way. And in Acts 9, the new converts, the new believers, were called people of the way, children of the way. The people who had figured out a way to live. It was a way of living submitted one to another. It was a way that they prioritized the call of God. They prioritized who Jesus was. It was what they lived for. It was what their businesses were all about. It's what their relationships were all about. It's what their gatherings were all about. It's about Jesus and who he is. And so it was a way to live. And so they were called people of the way. Um, they trusted God. One of the marks of being a... a a child of God, is that you trust him. <laughs> Jesus referred to God as Abba Father. Or my, it's a pops, it's a friendly, it's a, it's a daddy father. It's, it's a relationship. You can do all things. Can you get me out of this one? Oh, not my will, but thine be done. Submission is a way to live your life. Some of you know that it was a huge mistake for you to not do a background check on me and hire me as a pastor of the cowboy church when you know my horsemanship. I am scared to death of horses. They're big, unpredictable. I've ridden a few of them that have ran with me. So I had friends that wanted to go on a backpacking trip friends from Oregon here, and we went on a backpacking trip into the Bob Marshall Wilderness because I had another friend who was a wrestling referee that said, hey, anytime you want anybody to go back, I'm starting this backpack uh, business, and would you like to uh, uh, come back there with, we'd take you in there for a couple of weeks, that'd be awesome. So I said, oh, that sounds great, <laughs> except for horses. <laughs> so... Our Oregon friends were with us, and I was up there, and my brother was up there, and we were riding horses, and then all of a sudden, we started to go up the Great Divide. The Great Divide goes into the Barb Marshall Wilderness on the other side. When you sit on top of the Great Divide, you see flat, flat, dry country, and you can, all, you can, 
You can see the curve of the earth if you just have a little imagination. And then you look west and you see trees and hills and trees and hills and trees and hills as far as you can see until they disappear in the mist. Riding up that, they have a path that I don't know who carved out, but it's this wide. The horses have to walk one foot in front of the other. And, and we, I didn't know this was going to be the experience. So we're riding up this great divide and on these horses. And I was making sure the horse didn't fall over the edge. So I was like steering him <laughs> away from the cliff. He, in his little horse mind, was thinking, this has got to be the stupidest guy in the world. We could die if I let him drive. <laughs> Just then, my friend up front said, Hey, Joe, this horse has been over this path many, many, many times. They know the way. Just let the reins go and let the horse do what he does. And I, in my trembling, girly man voice, said, but it's really steep on that side. And his, making fun of me, he said, just loosen your foot in that stirrup that's downhill, so if the horse goes over the edge, you can jump off quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were doing what you were doing. Ha, 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 ha. I'm sitting there. <laughs> laughing and having fun at my expense. And, but I did that. I released the reins and I relaxed and the horse took me to safety to the other side. Can I just tell you, there is a great lesson in submitting to God as he knows the way. You know, as a pastor... You're involved in a lot of lives, and you realize there's a lot of hard things people go through. And you really have to struggle with it and say, God, this isn't supposed to happen. Then you have to let go of the reins and say, God, you're the horse. You're the, you're the, you're the one who's been here. I'm going to trust you and quit steering it around. Because you and I both know that's how we live our Christian life sometimes. we like, no, 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 this way. And God's just like... Okay, I've been here before you were ever here. Release and let me drive this family of yours. Release and let me drive this job of yours, this business of yours. Would you please trust me? I know the way. Would you become a child of the way, a follower of Jesus, to where people would notice that and call you people of the way? Because they know how. To submit to God and submit to his way. So the first line was submission is an act of our will. The second one is submission is a way. A way to live and a way to go. And thirdly, submission leads to life. It may not seem like it sometimes. But it leads to life. This kingdom we serve, some have labeled it an upside-down kingdom. It's, Jesus is the king, but he submitted himself and died for our sins. It's the opposite of what a worldly king would do. We are in this kingdom, and in most kingdoms you want to gather wealth. And, but it, in his kingdom, the more you give, the more you are blessed. The more surrendered you are, the more he lifts you up. The more, it's just how it is. Submission to God leads to life. Jesus said this, unless a kernel of seed, Bo wrote, read the scripture, unless a kernel of seed falls to the ground and dies, it can't produce fruit. No greater love has anyone than to lay down their life for their friends. Submission leads to production. The kingdom of God is expanded. 
if you operate in the worldly, things tend to shrink up on you. <laughs> so Lila and I came to plant a church in Oregon after 13 years in the first church we planted. It was going well, and we were trying to find someone else to go, and one of our leadership guys said, um, I think you've done this before. You're probably the best one to try and go plant another church. If we really mean business about this, you should go. So we, I, I hope he meant it. I mean, he didn't want us to leave. But we left and went to Monmouth. Monmouth, Oregon. It was a dry town except after 11 o'clock at night. The college kids were out and about. <laughs> Some of you went to school at, at school. You know the truth. So here's the scoop. I was supposed to go around to our denomination and talk to the pastors and say to them, I am planning to plant a church in Monmouth, and because it's within, you know, your region... It's very important that you are aware of what I'm doing. I'm not trying to steal your sheep. See, pastors get weird sometimes. We think that people are going to steal our sheep. Do you know, if I've stolen sheep from somebody, they weren't owned by... You Here's the deal. You can't lose somebody you don't have. <laughs> there, end of that discussion. But my point is... I had to go around with my little hat in hand and talk to the pastors in our region and say, I'm planting a church. We just wanted you to, to know that. And they were all pretty gracious about it and saying, fine, that's good, but just please let me know if any of my people drift over there because um, we were so weird in those days. <laughs> we didn't see the kingdom. Um, in our denomination, I particularly struggled with this. And... I would have meetings with these pastors in the region about this church plant. And I was, uh, I'm telling you, I was starving to death. I might, well, not totally, but I was really in trouble financially. And my wife and I were working and trying. We hadn't started the church yet. And I had meeting after meeting after meeting with the pastors of the region. And they would sit together and talk and, and buy me lunch, which was awesome. But I remember one of the lunch tabs was like over 100 bucks. And I thought... Wow, what I could do with that hundred bucks. Like, pay the rent coming up. But there was a man in Monmouth who pastored the Christian church. Not in my denomination. His name was Stan Peterson. He heard about me and he said, Joe, do you need anything? I have an office in my church if you need it. I said, what are you going to do? I said, well, I want to plant a church in Monmouth with a target, with a, with a focus on college students. That's awesome. Nobody's been able to reach those guys. Come into my, he had me in his board meeting. He had me in his, his office. And we decided after all my lunches with my other pastors and their, their, talk of their, they were 20,000 short this month in their budgets, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I said, I'm just going to start church. I had no clue what I was doing because I was in a different land than I was in. And Stan said to me, Joe, the Sunday before you start, it was, we'd rented a room at, at, the, at the campus, the Sunday before you start, I want you to speak in my church. This is one block away from where I'm planting the new church. One block away where I was planting a new church with a different denomination. And Stan said to me, Joe, would you please come and preach the sermon? We have two services, so would you preach them both? And then... We did. We had our little team there. And Stan, at the end of our sermon, my sermon brought us into the center aisle and had people pray over us. And then they took an offering for us. 
We happen to have about $1,350 worth of bills that were super needed to get paid. And they took an offering, and our offering exact amount was what that was. So, do you know how many people he lost from his church to join my new church plant one block away? Zero. Nobody. Do you know how many drifters came from the surrounding churches of my denomination? Gobs of them. The kingdom of God is where you submit, and if you submit, it will bring life. If you surrender, it will, God's blessing will be upon you. And lived a blessed life. So I have, I'm a little messed up because uh, last night he passed away. And so I'm just like, I've got to honor this guy. Because I'm not sure if someone wanted to plant a church across the road over here that I would say, come speak here first on the Sunday before you start. I hope I would. Because once we understand the kingdom of God, we understand that submission to God leads to life. It leads to production. It leads to growth. It leads to a calling of God upon you. And it's a wonderful world to live in that way. But it's, you're going to be known as people of the way because it's different. It's not the same. <laughs> so, and Stan would have us uh, in our minister's group that he led. He said, I would like us to switch pulpits. As just once a year, have an annual pulpit switch. We'll draw the names out of the hat and see who goes where to who. And I was thinking, okay, I'm in this group. I'd, I'd like him or him. I hope this guy, I drew the guy I didn't want to have come to my church. <clears throat> this is in us, folks, this battle of submission and surrender. It will rear its ugly head daily. And you have to live your life in such a way that you surrender to God. Um, in a conference, we had a speaker one time. We were a whole bunch of pastors. And she was a, an amazing, gifted counselor and speaker and she said some of you struggle with trusting God and what it is is you you develop basically you go through everything your church people go through you if your church people go through a hard life you go through that hard life if they go through a tragedy you go through that tragedy and how many know that if your kids go through something you're going through it too right so she taught us how to pray and I'll never forget it she said pray like this put your kids in your hands put your problems in your hands the church people and pray that way God you know my kids you know what they're going through you know the struggles and God I'm going to trust you with this and she said then when you're done saying that and bringing them to the Lord turn your hand over and say God I am releasing them now into your care Submission leads to life. Trust. Trust the one who has been there before you have ever showed up. Trust. It's that lesson I learned on that horse. Trust them and release them to God. I don't know who that's for today or who this is about. It's probably for all of us eventually. But maybe you're here today going through a difficult time of grabbing onto the reins and trying to make something work that doesn't seem to be working and it's out of fear 
or whatever it is. My challenge to you is to trust the one who went through what he did when he said to God, it's not my will, but your will. And God laid the sin of the world upon him, but then he rose him from the dead on the third day and conquered sin and death forever. So now we can, we can relax. We can enjoy our life. We can be people of the way, the way of submission. Would you bow your heads with me? And Jesus, we, we really appreciate you, Lord. We love you for what you've done, how you laid your life down for us. As such a great act of submission and surrender to our needs. So, Lord, we want to lay our life down and surrender to you. Maybe there's someone here today that is not yet surrendered their life to Christ. It's another way of saying becoming a person of the way, and which is becoming a Christian, someone who is following Christ. And you would like to accept him as your Lord today and let go of those reins of your life that you've been trying to steer so strongly. But he's saying to you, trust me. Trust me with your life. And if that's you, let's pray this prayer together as a church. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to trust you with my life. Receive my prayer of love and acceptance of you in my heart. In your name we pray.